Hey everybody, it's me, Tara D. Francisco, Bishop Watterson, class of 1994, class clown, good sport, and general life enthusiast. Before I go any further, I want to say for this record, hi, 201 of you that I graduated with. I hope you guys are doing great. Man, we had a great class, didn't we? I loved high school. And I honestly want to thank Bishop Watterson before I say anything else. You fostered an environment that we made a class of people that actually liked one another. And to my 20 closest friends, I'm uh, so happy that we still stay in touch. I am very lucky. I mean, we've helped each other through life events, like having babies or getting married or work advancements or hardships. And we even get together once a year to vacation. I mean, how crazy is that all these years later? Watterson, I think you helped us foster those relationships. And before I say anything else, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you. I met some of the greatest people in the world right there in my class. In fact, while I'm thanking you, Watterson, I actually should go ahead and thank you for a couple of things. I mean, man, looking back on your college prep curriculum alongside that tough grading scale is a thing I want to thank you for. You made academics much easier later in my life when I went on to college and certainly as a, as a grown-up adult. Nothing has really phased me in the way of academia, so that's nice. Number two, you helped us build community and stay in touch with people and find a way of, of kind of caring for lifelong relationships. That's an amazing amazing quality to instill into a body of people. And third, and I don't even need to tell you this really, the idea of us reflecting or progressing towards work and social justice is one of the coolest things you can tell a high schooler to do. So thank you. I think a lot of us have followed your lead. So why am I here? In full Watterson gear, no less. <laughs> well, uh, I got to tell you, before this video was happening, I um did a couple things I'm a little embarrassed about. I was uh, drinking a beer, wearing the logo, which is fairly blasphemous, and I apologize. Oh, and before this video came on, I almost chewed this piece of gum, but then I realized that if it was the mid-90s and I was seen doing this, it would result in a $5 gum fine or a box of Kleenex if you had Miss Wicker or Miss Gerhardt. And, uh, you know, this thing is, uh, a little restrictive, so I thought about taking the bibs down just to get a little more comfortable, and then uh, I remembered if it was uh, 1994 and I had done that on campus or I had walked down Cook Road, that would be a crime as deplorable in your eyes as adultery, so I rethought my rebellion. Uh, and then I started thinking, um, man, those laws are now really useless, and that's pretty funny. I mean, as a 30-something-year-old woman, why do I even need those laws anymore? And then you start thinking, well, okay, they put those laws intact to give us some parameters or to help the young and foolish through something they could possibly be protected in some way. And as I've gotten older, later you question why the heck those laws were intact and honestly, who the heck even put them there in the first place? which is good. You should question that, right? I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, gum doesn't really hurt anyone, and drinking a few beers within reason only results in a really good time, and uh, taking these bibs down isn't going to kill anybody. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> One of the most wonderful things that Bishop Watterson asked for us to do for ourselves is learn, question much, and glean as much information as you possibly could to make credible, logical, and practical choices for the rest of your lives. And I am. Especially in my 30s, the moral barometer that you instilled in me is less about the letter of the law and more about the spirit of the law. Honestly, I feel like it was when I attended there, but as I've gotten older, it's certainly about the spirit. And, um, look... All these things that you're asking me to do, all these things that we've applied to, I, I, do you think I'm a bad person? I can tell you that I'm not. In fact, I know a lot of really good people all over the world, and I bet they'd vouch for me. I'm an okay lady. I'm a nice girl. I've grown up a pretty decent human being. But, um... board last night. I was trying to wind down a little bit and I um, I picked up an Us magazine and uh, I read this copy of OK. Uh, I just wanted to know how Snooki lost the weight and I wanted to know how stars were just like us and I read those tabloid magazines and 
I feel awful now because technically that is engaging in gossip and that is a, that's a commandment breaker. I um, also yesterday was privileged to work with a lot of foreigners. I teach and I perform all over the world and I uh, didn't take any of them as slaves. I could have had them for six years and released them on the seventh. That's Leviticus. And I feel like I really missed an opportunity. Thirdly, um, I did a show last night, and right before the show, I was really hungry, and they had Panera on site, so I ate a ham sandwich, which is pig, which is pork, and that is the uh, cloven-footed animal mark of the devil. So I really blew that. Oh, not to mention that I drew a friend through a Popeye's uh, drive through and they ordered popcorn shrimp, which is shellfish. So uh, that was... That's something I'm rethinking. And, uh, oh, and as I mentioned, I'm wearing this uh, uniform, a jumper, uh, that you made me wear, actually, for four years, by the by. And uh, this thing is just full of mixed fibers, so I'm definitely going to hell. Watterson, you old dog, you made me commit a sin. I didn't even know I was doing it. I just got punked. <laughs> wow! Oh, I shouldn't scream, because if there was a man present and he heard me do that to him, I would... Uh, be publicly stoned. <laughs> and uh, I don't even know how I know that information because I'm just a woman and uh, technically I'm still property. I know. I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek, a little sardonic, a little irreverent, but you understand the point, right? I mean, these things that we're dealing with now, uh, do you really think we're bad people? I mean, do you think that if I committed all those crimes, those commandment breakers or sins, that that's made me a worse person now? Because I don't. Uh, even if I was menstruating, like right now, would you really think that I was unclean and unable to accept a peace offering? Too soon? Okay. Well... Before you start yelling at me and saying, TD, come on, look, those are like old laws in the Old Testament made by our Judaic forefathers, and we kind of believe in the new one in addition to the old one, so let's focus up a little bit. You're right, we do believe in the new ones, and we actually focus quite a lot of our energy on the four Gospels, so let's direct our attention there. In fact, if you have a minute, I would love for you to go through the four Gospels. If you leave through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're going to find that inside those Gospels, there is no mention of the word homosexuality. Go ahead. I dare you. Please, take this time. Pause this video. Put on some tombs. Take a couple days and uh, crack through those bad boys. And you're going to see that there's not any mention of gay being wrong. All these prophets that we listen to and lean on so hard have nothing inside their books about chastising someone for the person they love. Okay. So maybe you got through the books now. We'll assume the video is on pause. See, I was right. And I, I don't want you to take this video that I'm angry at you. I'm not really. I am um, I'm making this video because I love you. And you can do better. There's a lot of people that have graduated from your school that have worn your school's title like a badge of honor over these years and been nothing but thankful for the kinds of people that we've met within the school, but not necessarily the things and the bigotry that you enforce upon us to believe. So, I'm just begging you to listen to your constituents. Listen to your current students. There are students there right now wearing buttons that say to support someone that you fired. Listen to your alumni. Uh, your, your happy, passionate, intelligent, well-liked alumni. And moreover, listen to your donors. I mean, I don't know if I'm the first to tell you this, but uh, those people that I graduated with, they're just finally starting to make some money. They're doctors. They're lawyers. They're farmers. They're filmmakers. They're in the arts, like me. I'm a worldwide performer, and I could go all over the place for you, spreading the good cheer of what kind of wonderful education I had in a Catholic upbringing. But you're losing them, because the body of the church is the people, and you're not representing the people anymore. I feel more in line with a teacher that I barely knew than I do with my school. Carla Hale is my sister, and whatever you do, and to the least of my sisters, You've done it unto me. And while I'm talking about the Bible, name dropper, let's go ahead and name some other things that it says. Love thy neighbor. 
Love thy enemy. Judge not lest ye be judged. And let he who cast the first son be without sin. I know. I'm using all that rhetoric that you lean on. And I'm trying to practice what you preach throughout my entire life. And I know this wasn't all Bishop Watterson's decision. Some of it is from the diocese. So diocese, I'm also talking to you. Please don't bully my high school into making a decision or forcing them to do something that they didn't want to do. Because I know that while I attended Bishop Watterson in the 90s, there were two lesbian partners that were closeted through fear that still remain together today. And I got to tell you this, those two teachers were some of the best teachers that I've ever known. Not only that, but they're two of the greatest people that I continue to know. And their kind of couplehood and their relationship is something that I actually looked up to and hoped to find for myself when I was a kid. So that's what I learned there. And I'm just asking you to think about that. That part of this whole thing is your choice and your decision. And I know that the Catholic Church won't change overnight, but we're asking you to consider that maybe no longer do we need to force someone to drink from a different water fountain. Won't that be embarrassing in a lot of years? So, that's all I have to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pray for you. I'm not a big prayer anymore, but I am going to pray for you because that's in the Bible too. Pray for those who persecute you. And I will. And my friends that you've done that too. Oh, and even though it might be foolish, I'm going to try to believe in miracles still. I mean, I already squeezed in this little bad boy, so that's a miracle in itself. I hope you do better. I hope we all learn. And I hope you love harder.